Lagos Talks 91.3. Okay, 33 minutes gone past uh, 4 o'clock. You're listening to Lagos Talks 91.3. Welcome back to the Live Drive. My name is Kola Wale. And like I did mention earlier on, uh, we're going to be having a, an expert in the studio today to come and lighten us on something important on today's episode of The Office. And he's here with me, flesh and blood. And uh, in just a few seconds, we'll get to meet with him. But of course, you know that uh, The Office is proudly brought to you by the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, that's CIPM, and of course, Lagos Talks 91.3. Without further ado, uh, please make welcome with me to the studio, Dr. Ola Sunkade Aziz, FCIPM, Group Head, uh, Human Resources uh, Resort Group. You're welcome today, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, you look um, you look Monday, and today is a Thursday. When you say HR, ethically, I have to appear presentable, okay. official, okay. <laughs> and presentable. Okay, you're looking all of that too. You're welcome, sir. Thank you're you. welcome. Thank you're you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so on the office today, uh, we have something very important to um, throw light on. It's not, not something new. It's something that a lot of people have tried to address in workplaces, in workspaces. But uh, it seems we're still not hitting the nail on the head. But first of all, before we delve into all of that, uh, I would like to also... Uh, let you at home listening or in the office listening that uh, Dr. Ola Sunkade Aziz, uh, before joining the resort group in 2017, uh, was the general manager, human capital, and uh, CEO of non aviation fueling business at uh, CITA Petroleum Group. Uh, he was also with uh, the Nigerian bottling company PLC, Coca Cola, and left as a senior manager after 18 years of service. He held a B.E.D. Honours in Social Studies uh, from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe MBA, from the Lagos State University, Lasu, and an Executive Diploma in Human Resources Management from the University of Lagos Consultancy Services as Unilag Consult. And Dr. Aziz is a fellow and the second Vice President of the Nigerian Institute of Training and Development, uh, that's NITAD. He is also a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, CIPM, and served on the Governing Council. He has over 33 years of work experience and an alumnus of many advanced management development programs in Nigeria and abroad. Once again, I have with me Dr. Olasunkade Aziz, FCIPM. Okay, so let's quickly talk about, this is quite a robust uh, profile, I must say. Thank you. Um, I'm not surprised. Uh, I've heard of I've heard of your name somewhere before because I, I attended OEU as well. Great yes, so it's a great effect. Great, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's quickly run on with this. We have talked about this workplace ethic, and you did mention something about ethics and appearing well at any given time. Uh, but first of all, tell us about or shed more light on what you feel or what is workplace ethics. Thank you very much, the moderator. Uh, by way of correction, I am the immediate uh, past, uh, vice president of uh, NITA, that's Nigerian Institute of Training and Development. Mm. Let's now go, come back to the business of the day. Talking about uh, ethics in the workplace, let me actually try to start from this uh, analogy. Organization is derived from company. Company actually gave back to organization. Mm. And of course, company provides space for work. So place of work is actually owned by the company. And by way of, uh, uh, you know, further analysis, mm. where you say company in Latin, it derives its root from Latin word, which means company. Com means come. Then pani means bread, big bread. Come around, let's bake bread. And what does mm. that translate to? When we say uh, bread in this case, or cake in this case, is symbolic. Mm. It could be form of product, it could be in form of services, it could be in form of commodity and what have you. To actually bake the bread well, there must be rule of engagement. And of course, rule of engagement is articulated in what mm. we call ethics. Ethics actually govern both the organization and the employee among mm. all other uh, stakeholders. Mm. For that to that, um, you will agree with me that uh, workplace ethics simply refer to the way employee in an organization are governed and their overall work attitude character, mm. attributes, norms, and value 
that actually prevail as a check, as a balance, as a control in any given uh, organization. And by the way, when you look at uh, ethics globally, it's about four things. One, knowing the right thing. Two, doing the right thing. Three, mm. the right way. And of course, all the times. Mm. It's a guiding matter that actually uh, support individual and control individual the way and mm. manner they can get it done. Mm. And of course, for that to that explanation, there are some key indicators, key attributes that can actually ca- uh, calibrate an organization to know whether they are ethically inclined, ethically mm. compliant, and what have you. What are those things? Number one is about uh, timeliness. They say punctuality is the soul of business. Mm. For any employee to actually be seen as being ethical and also be an ambassador that replicates uh, what ethics principle, ethical principle talk about, it must be timely in, at, mm. in attendance, mm. timely in rendition of uh, core activities and what have you. Again, creative thinking. People must think creatively and intellectually in the workplace. Initiative. Ethics go a long way to encourage individual to actually have initiative, sense of initiative in whatever they do. It's also about accountability. Whatever an individual does, it must be held accountable, either for good or otherwise. Not only that, it's also about professionalism. Show me a successful organization. You will agree with me that you have a lot of story to tell. Many companies mm. have actually gone into extinction and they have become extinct. Why? All because they are not ethically guided, they are not ethically compliant, and of course, there are also not no checks and balances mm. that can actually support them today for them to create an insight against yesterday Sight for today and okay. then foresight against tomorrow. Okay. Okay. So um, let's uh, now throw more light. You've talked about what ethics, uh, workplace ethics are all about. It's quite um, a robust topic. If we're going to even delve into it, if we're going to spend more than an hour here talking about this. And as an expert, I'm sure you're well, uh, you're deep into all of this and uh, implementing all of these processes in workplaces and uh, workspaces. Uh, but what would you say in a nutshell is the importance of you know imbibing workplace ethics in any given organization whether it's a small scale organization whether it's a sole proprietorship whether it's a multinational organization what would you say is the importance of um, establishing workplace ethics it's okay thank you very much the significance of ethical practice and ethical standard in any organization cannot be very emphasized there are a lot of actually things that really make ethics become very, very inevitable in any organization. First of all, ethics help a lot in effective productivity as well as great balance of individual responsibility and professional calling. There's that balance. Mm. Because many a time you find people in a moral dilemma. Do I do this? If I do it for my personal gain, will it be to the advantage or detriment of my organization? It brings in sense of balancing in anything individual does. Not only that, uh, an organization could actually be seen, uh, perceived to act ethically by employee if employee can realize that positive, uh, positive benefit and improve uh, business outcome is the best best in any ethically uh, inclined environment. Mm. As I said earlier on, it's all about knowing the right thing, doing the right thing, and of course also ensure that it does not become a project. It becomes a culture and then the only legacy that will enable us to have a better tomorrow for sustainability and continuity mm. of any business, regardless of the size, whether corporate, multinational, uh, medium, small size, and what have you. Mm. In other words, any organization that actually have an uh, ethical standard as the, as the guiding principle, of course, they will surely um, succeed in whatever they are doing today, mm-hmm. and of course, a lot of things will also go along with that. And when you are talking about that, it's all about being honest. Anything you do, you must not compromise honest. Within the honesty. workspace. In the, yes. Mm-hmm. Honesty is very, very important. Individual stakeholders must be punctual. There must be discipline. They must be disciplined. Not only that, there must also be reliability. Some people are available, are they reliable? And if they are reliable, mm-hmm. are they available? So combination of this goes a long way. Ultimately, all this go a long way to increase mm. the productivity of any organization. Mm. Further to this, some common workplace ethics includes 
trustworthiness, respect, accountability, as I mentioned earlier on, transparency, mm. and of course, integrity. Okay, Dr. Adi- Aziz, you've been uh, quite uh, deep with all of these things, but I'm going to ask you a question, and it's about how organizations could you know, begin to imbibe or begin to implement some of these things. But let's go on a quick break. Uh, this is The Office. You're listening to Lagos Talks 91.3. We'll go on this quick break, and uh, when I come back, we'll speak more to Dr. Aziz and ask him a few more questions. Of course, you have a chance to ask him questions as well. Uh, 0809 234 We'll go on this quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, welcome back. You're listening to The Office here on Lagos Talks 91.3. So far, we've been discussing with an HR expert and himself, uh, Dr. Aziz, FCIPM. Uh, before we went on that break, we threw light on what workplace ethics are all about, um, you know, the importance of ethics in the workplace. But right now, let's let's talk about something else right now. How This is Nigeria, right? So we have a lot of businesses of different scale. Um how do you think, I don't know if it's a different case per scale or per type of business or per industry, but how do you think uh, an ideal organization who wants or who wants to progress, you know, or advance in their different spheres, how would you say or what would you say they can do to, you know, implement workplace ethics in uh, their organization or in your setting? It's okay. Thank you very much. As I said, regardless of... Uh size of any organization you know uh, there are things that are so common we have man we have material we have method we have uh, machinery we have minute 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 means time all these permeate across all organizations but out of the whole lot there are resources out of the all these resources man actually stand out why it is a thinking asset mm. thinking ability that can actually optimize the utilitarian value of all other resources. So it is not a matter of uh, size specific. Mm. Any organizations being uh, managed by, by people require ethics mm. to actually guide them mm. to be able to do things right. Be that as it may. Yeah. There are two angles I'm actually going to, try going to look at it. The first one is how will, what are the steps that an organization needs to do to actually set up mm. a, an ethical Environment. Environment. And having put it in place, having articulated it, then what are the things they need enablers that can actually encourage it to actually make it happen? The first one is about how to develop. Number one, there must be sufficient establishment of the business philosophy mm. as passed down by the owner of the business. So it's, it goes down from the from the yes, top to, from the, to yes. the bottom. The, the, the top people actually set the tone. Mm. What is our vision? What is our mission? What are our core value? So that whatever they do in terms of uh, ethical orientation, mm. ethical procedure, ethical processes or policy, will be in line to alignment with that particular mm. official, uh, yeah. that particular direction. Mm. Not only that, having put that in place, the vision, the mission, the core value, and what have you, there must also be code of ethics. And this code of ethics should not hang in the balance. The owner of the business or the promoter of the business should hand down. And of course, the the, 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 the strategies in the organization should come up with what I call a code of ethics. Mm. Not only to come up with it, not mm. only to articulate or develop it, but to also disseminate and get all, stake up, all stakeholders uh, buy in to be able to promote the business philosophy mm. that will come up with a business model. Mm. Not only that, they also need to engage key stakeholders, the mm. employee, the regulators, the customers, the client, and what have you. Mm. They also need to reinforce the benefit of the code of, of the code of ethics. What gets reinforced get done and mm. you know become part and parcel yeah. of mm. an organization. Mm. Not only that, you should also have the leader of the of the of the business should be should play the role of a role model. They should play the role of role model, hack it, believe in it, demonstrate it, and of course articulate it. And they, of course, they should also be uh, what I call ambassador plenipotentiary, who will basically, you know, personify that particular thinking, that mm-hmm. action and philosophy. Mm-hmm. They should also promote ethical behavior by way of reward. They say what well, get rewarded, get actually reinforced. Now this, this particular point seems to be very, very um, controversial, especially in Nigeria, where it seems like getting a reward from uh, for your good work 
in Nigeria amongst workers and organizations is, is a Herculean task. A lot of um, organizations fail to adequately reward uh, good deeds within the organization. Would you say that is an integral part of workplace ethics that, that could be like somewhat generic? Well, I, I, will, I will say no. As a child leader, I've worked across uh, sectors of the economy. Mm. Uh, you know, I've worked in uh, construction, manufacturing, aviation, and what have you. Um, all these places I've worked, in any situation where people bring in beyond the call of duty, there's mm. a way we reward them. Okay, so, but, but, but I know the HR is a department within the organization. Yeah. But then again, it just seems like, are they independent? And can they make decisions independently? Or no, they need to still HR get... Cannot, HR is not, but if HR has a, a seat mm. at the decision-making table, they mm. can influence the organization. But it boils down to the... The stakeholders, the, yes. the major, the, the investors. It, it, it's all about justifying. The CEO, etc. It's, et it's all about justifying. Mm. It's all about promoting the brand equity of an organization. Mm. You know, some company, when you have issue with them, you know, within the GFI, they will solve your problem. Or that they will be food dragging. And of course, you know for mm. sure that, you know, when you, made an, when, you, when you made an error, you are going to pay squarely for it. Mm. But I let me just use this program being collaborated between you and CIPM. Mm. And I know it's one of the reasons why they want to reinforce ethical behavior in our organization. I know for sure CIPM has its own ethical behavior, mm. ethical uh, orientation and code. Guidelines. The guideline. As we are going mm. on, I can actually share it before mm. we, you know, we end this program. But the part I'm trying to say in essence is people that are up there, they should encourage people to do things right. They should. It's not only monetary reward. Even Bible says, mm. says that a man diligent in his work is a star before no mima, but before kings. What does that mean? We must reinforce. Back to our school days, we learn about reinforcement by Pavlov theory, mm. right? In Pavlov theory, he said, you reinforce what you reward, what you want reinforce, and what you want repeated. So meaning that if you want our people to do things right, and not continue doing that, mm. continually, mm. it must be rewarded. But meanwhile, in getting this done, since we are now on it, you are starting a practical example. I could discover, I mean, I could recall one of the companies where I worked. Mm. Anytime we have that, there's a way we reward them. But we usually give them work clock branded with that particular multinational logo. The first time, the second time, the third time. Yeah. What people say, uh, fellow staff just say, oh, you want to die because of work clock? What does that tell us? Mm. There must be creativity in rewarding mm. Good work at you know okay. uh, ethical behavior. Uh, let, let's see if we can take a call right now. Uh, maybe just one call. No problem. Legos Talks. Okay, 0809-234-5913. 0809-234-5913. You can also forward your questions. We could take one question, maybe one on the phone line and then one on the WhatsApp line. Uh, okay, so you've talked about this now. And uh, I would like to know, do you, during the recruitment process, is there, is there, is there an avenue to, uh, as, as someone gets into a company and as a recruiter, is there an avenue for that exchange of, of idea that this is how we do things here? This is what is expected of you when you come in to join the team or join the organization. Is that a, a modus operandi and is that something that should be encouraged during recruitment processes across uh, different spheres in Nigeria as far as employment is concerned? I agree with you. It should be. You know, uh, uh, when you say interview, it's one of the key area, key process. Is one of the key is a, is an element of the key processes in HR in IR, uh, whatever. Mm. It is actually an avenue for uh, organization to promote its value. Not only that, recruiters, employers of labels, and of course prospective employer should be able to actually harness that particular thing mm. in determining whether an employee is best fit. They have core mm. value, and of course they must they can actually ask some questions that can make, you know, they can paint a scenario of moral dilemma that assuming you join us, you are part of our team. How will you mm. behave? How will you react? What will be your decision if you find yourself in this kind of precarious moral dilemma? How mm. will you go about it? The response of that person will confirm the alignment with the strategy, with the core value of an organization or otherwise. So in other words, there's mm. something wrong in that. Mm. It's to enable us to know that this person is actually best for you. Mm. Okay, yeah, we have a call on the line. We take one call. Welcome, Lagos Talks. Yeah. Welcome to the office. Good afternoon. It's Abu Zawanez from Abadu. Yeah, please you go ahead. There's no organization in our government in Nigeria that uh, promotes uh, reward gratitude. The only reward in gratitude. That is why the country is like this. 
Mm. And uh, the gratitude is, is due to the uh, okay. negativity. Uh, uh, Mustafa, do you have a, do you have a question? We actually are taking questions right now. Do you have a question for our guests in the studio? The only thing I will appeal to the question is so that it is agree with you. That is the only thing I can say. Okay. Because well, there's no okay. one that uh, recognizes the mm. positive one. Gratitude, attitude, mm. activist. God bless Nigeria. All right, thank you so much. Uh, well, we are taking actually questions, but um, I think you, you said something about um, the way things are generally in Nigeria. From your own, you are seasoned in this uh, industry. Uh, how would you um, how would you analyze the current situation as far as uh, employment, employee relationships are concerned, workplace environments are concerned? Would you say, on a scale of one to ten, would you say we're doing a good job as far as uh, workspaces here are concerned? Well. You know, you can't build something on nothing and it will stand. Mm. For me to say that is purely scientific and it also has to be based on numerical reasoning. Mm. Since I've got no data collated, mm. analyzed, and of course getting the outcome. But, 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 the places you've worked so far. Maybe on the, well, my mm. own work experience. Mm. I would say, uh, maybe I would say maybe about uh, six over ten. In terms of... Um, Enacting workplace ethics. Yes, ethics. Mm. Six over ten. Well, we do. Do you want to give us examples quickly? Yeah, time is fast I've spent. Examples you. of um, a, um, cases where um, there's been a breach of you know the ideal in terms of workplace ethics. Uh, are there things we can look out for and we can say this is an example or a sign that this environment isn't doing the right thing in terms of an, you know enacting okay. workplace ethics? There are a lot of examples. Yeah, that are banned here and there. Dishonesty can actually be one of them. Mm. Somebody forgot his uh, pouch containing money and valuable mm. items, and the staff, you know, per chance, it up. just pick it up and never reported it. Mm. That's a dishonesty. And of course, it can actually a- affect the organization, it can damage the reputation of that organization. C- is, is there a room for uh, reprimand from the, well, from the, the bosses or the from level the of technology organization? Now, CCTV do recall. Mm. From their footage, so it's a thing. tool for, yes, for when they implementing discover such a thing, it. Mm. There's what we call code of conduct. Mm. Code of conduct basically detail different infraction. Mm. You understand what I'm trying to say? And of course, they will apply the right section of the code of conduct mm. to uh, punish such a staff. Mm. And again, if you are to be the other way around, he pick it up and he report it to his own person, uh, supervisor. Mm. Of course, there will also be avenue for such a person to be celebrated. Okay, it happens right. here and there. Okay. All right. We've come to an end of uh, to this interview. Thank you so much, sir, uh, Dr. Aziz. Thank you. Uh, for stopping by. He is FCIPM, Group Head, Human Resources Resort Group. We look forward to having you, Thank you. at uh, a later time. No problem. Thank All you. All right. You're listening to Lagos Talks 91.3. We've got more coming your way. Stay with us and we will be right back. We are Lagos Talks 91.3.